Well, I thought if you were paying attention to the news at all this week that we were reminded of just how tenuous and uncertain our world truly is and how quickly and easily circumstances can change and escalate and suddenly threaten to spin out of control. General Martin Dempsey, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, just before he left office, wrote this and I quote, I can't impress upon you enough, upon you enough, that it is my personal military judgment formed over 38 years that we are living in the most dangerous time in my lifetime right now, he wrote. Senator John McCain said not long uh, before he died, and I quote again, the world is in greater turmoil than at any time in my lifetime, he said. In the face of such uncertainty, it is human nature to want to know what and when and how I can know and how I can be ready. The disciples expressed that desire on a number of occasions, one of them being on the eve of Jesus' arrest in Jerusalem. They were leaving the temple when one of them said to Jesus, look teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings, and they were. The Jews were no fans of Herod, but they loved the temple he had built for them. One of the wonders of the world, 1,660 feet long, 900 feet wide, walls 16 feet thick, described by one scholar, a mountain of white marble decorated with gold, an object of dazzling beauty. With it came a significant sense of permanence and of security, of being a privileged people, an exceptional people. So you can imagine, uh, if you think about it for a moment, the shock when Jesus responded, do you see all of these great buildings? I'm telling you that not one single stone will be left upon another. Everyone will be thrown down. Imagine that you're standing in the rotunda of the nation's capital. What an awesome place that is as you look up. And somebody reliable is standing next to you and says to you, let me uh, tell you something, it's going to be nothing but a pile of rubble. It would be unimaginable, incomprehensible. As they made their way up the Mount of Olives from there, they had some time, the disciples did, to ruminate on the implications of what Jesus said. And as they sat there on the Mount of Olives, looking down over that great temple, we're told that Peter, James, and John, and Andrew came to Jesus privately and asked him, Tell us, teacher, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? When and how will we know so we can be ready? Jesus' response is what is commonly referred to as the Olivet Discourse. In Mark chapter 13, verses, and we will read this morning, verses 5 through 31. Jesus' response to their question. Mark chapter 13, verses 5 through 31. And when you have that in your Bible, if you would stand with me out of reverence for the Word of God. And I'll be reading out of the New International Version. Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are all the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings 
as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything out of it. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those days will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning, when God created the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So be on your guard. I've told you everything in advance. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and he will gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that the summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all of these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The word of the Lord. Thanks. You may be seated. Thank you.